что... Why do you think so many people accuse you of fraud? It was a courthouse confrontation with the Houston real estate developer facing mounting accusations of fraud. But it turned out the real star of the show on social media that day would be Chowdhury's lawyer, former Houston City controller Lloyd Kelly. He even played some imaginary basketball for the camera as he tried to block our access. Why do you think so many people are suing Ali Chowdhury for fraud? Why do you do fake news like this? Fake news, huh? Look at this Harris County lawsuit from 2013. Ali Chowdhury accused of F-R-A-U-D. Oh, that spells fraud. And you know who made the claim against Ali Chowdhury long before we ever heard of his 100 plus civil lawsuits? Lloyd Kelly did, while he threatened his client Chowdhury with, quote, disclosure of potentially damaging facts. Fake what? news. Fake news. They obviously well, kissed and fraud. made up. Why are you on the fake news channel? Kelly would help Chowdhury in his famed Sharia divorce case and in lawsuits involving that fraud word again. But come on, what does Lloyd Kelly really tell Ali Chowdhury when he thinks you aren't listening? Follow along as the bombs drop. Oh. I'm done with the Ali bullshit. No, no. Ali think he's so slick, he can f everybody. Your shit ain't floating nowhere, nowhere. Your shit doesn't float, Ali. It's bullshit from the get-go. And you've been listening to hours of my advice to my client that you electronically intercepted and have. For the record, we didn't secretly record any of this. And during these recordings, Kelly didn't represent anyone in the real estate deal that could blow up in his face. In a sworn affidavit, Chowdhury's former Lieutenant Chris Wyatt says he recorded the conversation and he says it was done at Ali Chowdhury's direction. Lloyd, I'm pissed off that you told me to do certain things I shouldn't have done. I regret that. Yes, Mr. Kelly, sounds like Ali Chowdhury was trying to get a confession out of you. Bet you didn't know that when you got in my face last May. You lied! No, You're a liar, Wayne. You're a liar. A two-bit liar. Our little confrontation with Lloyd Kelly pales in comparison to his phone fight over something called 2017 Yale. We were already investigating that project back in May. Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of talk about some fight over Yale Street where you were involved in. I'm invited in all kinds of fights. Yeah. I'm the lawyer on a lot of stuff. It turns out 2017 Yale development is not an address. It's the year it was created. And they owned this place in 2019, 829 Yale, a multi-million dollar five-story condo building called the Victoria, started way back in 2016. But as you can see, it was never completed. Some of the building is flooded. It's full of garbage. Prime real estate near Heights Mercantile that's become an eyesore in this stretch of the Heights. You know, the people in Houston are harmed by, by the fraud that was committed, that drive by that project, that live around the neighborhood because the project has been stalled by this action. That's funny. One of the reasons the place looks like this is because of Ali Chowdhury. I personally, heart-wise, have given up on ever hoping to finish it, you know, because I don't think it'll ever come out of litigation. I, I think at some point the city of uh, Houston will take that building down. Terry Fisher ran into money troubles developing 829 Yale, and he sold the deed to the property to Ali Chowdhury. Just one giant problem. The investors who were financing the construction, and there were lots of them, they didn't get their money back. Didn't know the property even changed hands. The building, after all, was their collateral. You didn't pay any of the lenders on 829 Yale. Prior to taking, prior to Jet, I'll take a title, correct? I don't know. And you don't know? Uh, when you say pay, I don't know what form you mean that. Remember, this is a guy who does real estate deals for a living. You laugh when someone sells your collateral out from under you without telling you? <laughs> take That's it for collateral. Chowdhury reportedly convinced angry lenders and contractors that he'd finished the project. They'd all get their money back. 
After Chowdhury's company, Jedal, took over the property on Yale, it was transferred to another company called 2017 Yale Development. Notice the address. It's the same as Chowdhury's headquarters. And Chowdhury's CFO at the time said the building was now his. Are you the sole manager and member of that entity? I am. Brad Parker's testimony, remember, was under oath, under penalty of perjury. But was he just a front man for Lloyd Kelly and Ali Chowdhury? This is Ali Chowdhury under oath, too. Do you have any right to control anyone that's associated with 2017 Yale Development LLC? No. But this is Ali Chowdhury on the phone with Lloyd Kelly, admitting the ownership of the Heights property was hidden to keep his wife from finding out about it in that Sharia divorce case. Because of the divorce, I had Brad as my proxy in front. You know that. Lenders continued to finance the construction even after 2017 took over, despite the slow pace of work. The first loan payment wasn't due until November 2017. Lawyers now claim Chowdhury and his company never paid a dime of it. And they found out the property had changed hands again. You better listen to this. It's a bombshell. It's attorney Lloyd Kelly saying he's the secret owner of the place. Something he hid from multiple courts and judges, including you, Judge Miller. On the phone call, Kelly says he was given the property to pay off $3 million in legal debts the Chowdhury family had run up. So was Brad Parker telling the truth two years later when he said he was the only owner of 829 Yale? And there's no expectation that you, you know, your expectation is not to share a penny of that with Ali or anybody else? I don't know how many more times I can answer this. I've said no consistently. The answer is no. It's my entity. But was Parker really just saying what Lloyd Kelly told him to say? Kelly, you told him to say that he owns it and he manages it. That's what you told him. He never said the word owns. Yes, he did. He said he's the only owner. Yes, he did. You told him to say that, Lloyd. Were you given 829 Yale to make up for Mr. Chowdhury's legal fees? I wish. That, you know. Never happened. Have you, will you pay me? It never You owe me money, man. We had our chat with Lloyd Kelly right after he was accused of perjury in the real estate case, keeping his real interest in 829 Yale a secret from the judge. Quoting, the depth of their depravity defies experience, lawyers argued. And the judge was asked to disqualify Kelly. Quoting, the only people who benefited from the fraud on my client, argued lawyer Chris Ramey, is Lloyd Kelly and Michelle Fraga and maybe Ali Chowdhury. Judge Miller didn't issue a ruling yet, but he also hadn't heard the tape. Until now, it's attached to new court filings in this case. We should look at the state bar rules on lawyers' conflict of interest. A lawyer shall not represent opposing parties to the same litigation. But Lloyd Kelly has been a lawyer in this Heights legal battle from the very beginning. At least three admitted clients we can count. Court documents show he first represented the original developer, Terry Fisher. Remember, it was Fisher who then secretly transferred the property to Ali Chowdhury. Kelly never told the court he was coordinating the deal with Chowdhury, but the tapes prove he was. And when Terry Fisher was finally put under oath back in February of 2019, listen to who's there listening. Lloyd Kelly for David Albert. But Kelly wasn't Fisher's lawyer anymore. He had a new client. David Alvarez, one of the investors who claimed he had been ripped off. There's no dispute that after a private meeting, Alvarez not only agreed to release his lien on the property, but hire Lloyd Kelly. Kelly claims Alvarez waived any conflict, but I bet he didn't know that Mr. Kelly secretly owned the property. 
and I think he's pissed because the property was moved in the middle of uh, trial. Who cares what he is, whether he's pissed or not? Who well, cares? Who cares? Nice way to talk about a client who hired you to help him in a legal fight. Watch as Kelly even attacks the lawyer who's probing who the real owner of 829 Yale was. I know he's inexperienced, I know he's green, but don't ask the lawyer the question. That's probably standard. He'll learn. Objection, Wait, objection sidebar. Look. And let the record reflect that Mr. Kelly has now wasted 45 seconds and counting of uh, deposition time again. Now Kelly is showing up as a lawyer for 2017 Yale development. Hard to keep up. He's hiding from the court evidence he's the real owner of the property. Then there's Michelle Fraga. She represented Chowdhury's company in his divorce case and is now the lawyer for Brad Parker. What a tangled web we weave. Fraga is the sister of Eva Guzman, a Republican candidate for Texas Attorney General. Kelly called the comments in open court pure slander, and later, he threatened me too. I'm going well, to watch everything you press. Yeah, I'm going to sue you. Okay, good. Because you're going to make a mistake. Okay. You hate me. I know you do. I, it's really so... Be I mean, last you. time you were such a fool on that TV, but you read I think you're a joke. Kelly sued Channel 13 after our investigation of his work habits as city controller. He lost, and it was 23 years ago. But now, along with Fraga, they face serious allegations in court that they were architects of a major Heights real estate fraud. Quoting, Kelly and Fraga's misconduct, in conjunction with Chowdhury, have already gotten two judges recused disqualified, or splattered all over the news just recently. With other judicial scandals swirling around their prior cesspools of litigation. Ali needs to run his company and make deals. We exposed the judicial misconduct of Judge Brittany Morris early this year. Lloyd Kelly and other Chowdhury Associates funding her election campaign, and then Judge Morris tried to help Chowdhury in her court, hiding her relationship with Houston's accused real estate racketeer. The Judicial Conduct Commission should have removed her from the bench, but they haven't. But that's why these phone recordings are so explosive. You've heard Kelly accuse Chowdhury of ripping his investors off. Kelly and Fraga, well, they don't know what Ali Chowdhury said about them after the phone was hung up. These guys are crooks. Wonder if Lloyd Kelly and Ali Chowdhury are still laughing after this video. I've got a feeling the judge won't be.